Hello everyone, it's Gumpy Gamer. Welcome back to another Take It tutorial. Today we're going to be showing you how to make a sunroof that automatically closes whenever it rains or at night time. Now you can always also use this to make a blast door or uh, window shutters. I'm just going to do a sunroof though today. Same principle though, either way you do it. But anyway, as you notice, here's our sunroof. It's open right now. Uh, it'll close when it rains. So let me turn on the rain. And it'll close here in just a second. There we go. So that's pretty cool. I love that. Now let's turn the rain off. And I'm going to show you that it works at uh, whenever it gets dark too. So basically whenever it starts raining it'll close or whenever the sun goes down it'll close. So let's go ahead and just set it to midnight. You can see it's dark now so it's going to close. There we go. So let me go ahead and set the time today. I'm going to show you how this all works. Now the way I'm controlling this is with a light sensor. Now let me get my trusty little screwdriver out. There we go. As you can see, here's the uh, light sensor. There's actually, uh, I got four of them set up right here. Now this thing's got a shutter. So if I um, hold down the shift key and right click it, it'll change the shutter. And it's got four different states. It's got full open, close one, close two, and then close three. So um, what we're going to be doing is using this setting. So let me show this to you actually. I'm going to turn the rain on. I'm going to show you what happens when it rains. Now when it rains it gets just a little bit darker. Actually the light level goes down by three. But if you can see this one went out. So if we take a light sensor and close it all the way as far as it'll go, uh, you can use it for a rain detector during the day. Now at night obviously that's going to go out too. So this is what we're going to use. So basically the shutter will close or the window or sunroof whatever it'll close whenever it rains or whenever night comes. So let me show you how this thing works. Now the actual door itself is support frames and they're covered up with covers. Let me show you what a cover is. Here's a cover. I'm just using cobblestone cover so um, let me go ahead and place it down a support frame and I'll show you what these look like on the ground. There we go support frame and then we can just cover it up. Now there's a reason we want to cover it up one, it's just cosmetic, but two, any any time it touches another block, it'll stick to it. So if you don't want it sticking to anything, like see, it's sitting on the roof. We don't want it. We don't want it um, sticking to the roof. So there's actually covers on the bottom too. Now, the frame motors. These are called frame motors. These move it back and forth. These ignore the covers. Don't worry about that. But these right here are called frame motors and there's two of them, one to make it open, one to make it close and you can see it has an arrow. Now if I want to change that arrow all I got to do is uh, right click just like that and if if I hold down shift key and right click the arrow will move to a different face. Um, I don't want to do that because it's kind of complicated getting it back to right. But anyway this thing requires electricity to run. It uses uh, Bluetricity so what you need is you need some solar panels like this uh, those are red power two solar panels and this wire right here is blue alloy wire it goes up and feeds power to it but this right here is just a, a battery box this just gives us a little electricity at, at night so without that it won't operate but anyway you can see the power wire coming up here and it goes across the top of them so they're both connected to power now next let me show you the light sensor Here's the light sensor right here. Have it closed all the way, just like down there. And right here, the output splits. Now, this is actually the, the front end of the circuit. It's the same as the uh, alarm. I have built an alarm in another tutorial. It, 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 uh, the alarm sounds whenever the sun comes up or goes down. But this right here, it's the same front end. So basically, we're taking the output of the light sensor and we're sending it to these things right here these are called pulse formers now what they do is they take a constant signal see this is a constant logic one high signal so we want a pulse so what happens is whenever this input goes from low to high it puts out a pulse it doesn't put out a pulse when it goes from high to low just from low to high so that brings us to this side now the reason we have to do this other side because we actually want the pulse we, we actually want a pulse whenever it goes from high to low or low to high. In other words, if it turns night, we want the, the door to close. If the sun comes up, we want the door to open. So 
the way we make it trigger from high to low is we put a NOT gate in front of it. This is a NOT gate, it just inverts the signal so it turns a 1 into a 0 or a 0 into 1 or low into high or high into low. It just, it just makes the inverts the signal. So you can see that right here. If you look right here, this is actually off the output of the NOT gate. And so what happens is whenever there's a transition on this line, one of these two pulse formers will fire. Right now, if, if, if it was to turn dark, this pulse form right here would fire because its input would go high and that's going to make it put out a pulse. It's a very brief pulse. It's way less than a second. Just So they're actually tied together right here and they go into here. This is a state cell. It's set to six seconds. Now what a state cell does whenever it gets a, a, a logic high on its input it just uh, puts out a, it puts out a pulse for a set amount of time. I have it set for six seconds. So um, whenever it transitions from not today or vice versa this state cell is going to put out a pulse for six seconds. Now what are we using the pulse for? We're using the pulse to turn a timer on. The, what a timer is going to do, this is the timer right here, it's going to put out a pulse every two seconds. This thing is going to spin around and every time it gets to right back to here it's going to put out a pulse. So I have this set to six seconds and I have this set to two seconds. And so if I turn this on this thing is going to put out exactly three pulses. That's important because what will happen what happens here is if you look at the door to close the door it's going to have to move one, two, three spaces and then to open it's going to move one, two, three spaces. So that's why this timing is critical. This is set to six seconds and this is set to two seconds. Now you could probably speed it up just a hair but not too much because what happens is it takes a little over a second for these frame motors to move the the door or the roof or whatever so um, it's easier to set it for six seconds here and two seconds here but anyway if you notice right here I also have a knock gate between the timer and the um, state cell that's just used to invert the signal because a, a timer when it has a high input it's off when it has a low it's on so we just basically need to invert the signal so as you see right now the state cells off but the timer is getting a high signal but now here's the next thing. This is our final problem, this is, uh, and this is actually the most complicated part I think to understand. But we have two frame motors now. If I was to transition from not today, watch what happens. These things going to get a pulse. One, two, three. There's your three pulses. Now this frame motor right here moves. You can see right there it moves it to the moves the uh, roof to the left the other frame motor moves it to the right and so basically the timer, we don't want the timer going to both motors at the same time, that would obviously cause a problem so we need to make a, a circuit that will um, control which which motor gets the signal so let me show you how that works. Now if you come all the way back to here, all the way back to the light sensor I have a blue insulated wire coming off here now it goes to here and it splits and it goes to these two AND gates. It goes here and it also comes here. Uh, you can see it going up right here. It goes through a NOT gate and then it goes to right here. I'll get to that in a second. But basically an AND gate, it turns the signal off and on. It's used to, it's used to control the signal. So basically if this timer was on, uh, if an AND gate, if both of its inputs are high, it puts out a pulse. So if one input is low, then it won't do anything. So basically use an AND gate turn the signal off and on but right now since it's daytime this blue wire is high you can see it right here so if this timer was actually on it would send a pulse to this motor but now if it was actually dark this blue line would be off but if you come up here we're going through a NOT gate and that's going to turn this um, low signal back into a high signal so that this AND gate allows the signal to pass through the signal from the timer here. So during the, at night time this motor right here activates. Now at dawn this motor will activate. So let's do it one more time just to show you. Oops. Got disoriented. There we go. It's pulsing. But it's a pretty nifty little circuit now. You could like I said before you could use this for a blast door you could do window shutters however you want. You don't have to even build all this elaborate setup. You could just uh, 
maybe put it on a modify it a little bit and put it on a switch so that you can control it just like open the sunroof whenever you want but anyway this shows you how to do it or if you just want the door to close at night or when it rains but anyway I appreciate you watching this if this is your first time coming to my channel um, I do all kinds of tech tutorials and let's play so feel free to check them out subscribe that kind of thing and if you enjoyed this video please give it a like because uh, video gets a lot of likes first of all I'll be honest with you, it just helps my channel but secondly if a video gets a lot of likes I know I'm on the right track and I will do more videos of that type because a lot of times you put up a video it doesn't get many views many likes and some do and some don't but I'm gonna keep making the videos to get lots of likes and views so anyway Scrumpy Gamer I appreciate you watching and we will see you next time